Hi team, so in this video I want to focus on the learning process and more specifically how creating context facilitates learning. Now, years ago I was in the comedy cellar in New York City watching a comedian pacing back and forth on stage with the famous brick wall behind him and uh, I cannot quite recall the current events themed joke he told, but I distinctly remember how he responded when no one laughed. He said, you have to know stuff to get jokes. And I agreed with him on the latter point, but noted that while knowing stuff may be a prerequisite for understanding comedy, it certainly wasn't helping him create it. Now, this book, Moonwalking with Einstein, which you can judge by its title because it is awesome, caused this anecdote to flash from memory. The hook that retrieved it from the back of my mind was the author's description of the following paradox. It takes knowledge to gain knowledge. You've probably heard it. And it used a cool study about baseball to make the point. The book reads, this paradox is captured in a study in which researchers wrote up a detailed description of a half inning of baseball and gave it to a group of baseball fanatics and a group of less avid fans. And the baseball fanatics structured their recollections around important game-related events like runners advancing and run scoring. You almost got the impression that they were reading off of an internal scorecard. And less avid fans remembered fewer important facts. They were far more likely to recount something superficial, details like the weather. Without a conceptual framework in which to embed what they were learning, they were effectively amnesics. They were already forgetting it all. Now, personally, I know nothing of baseball. If I was asked to recount half an inning, my superficial details might include, I think everyone was wearing pants. But the argument is sound and the benefit perfectly captured by the author. And I love this sentence, the more we remember, the better we are at processing the world. And the better we are at processing the world, the more we can remember about it. Now, think about this in the context of an interview where you're required to present a case study or even a presentation to an investment committee or board of directors. If you don't have context, those that do will know it. For another cool example, think of the Baker-Baker paradox which uh, really resonates with people that can't remember other people's names, so everyone. So in this example, individuals are shown the exact same photograph of a face. One is told that the name of the person pictured is Baker, and the other is told that the person pictured is a Baker, the profession. The individual that is told a profession has a much, much higher chance of recalling the word at a later date when they are shown the exact same photograph again. So what's taking place? Per the book, when you hear that the man in the photo is a baker, the fact gets embedded in a whole network of ideas, things that you have stored in your mind about what it means to be a baker. He cooks bread, wears a big white hat, um, it's covered in dough, dough balls, flour, etc. The name baker, on the other hand, is tethered only to a memory of one person's face. Now, the advantage we have today is the amount of information available. In 2016, IBM reported that every single day we create 2.5 quintillion bytes of data, so much that 90% of the data in the entire world back then had been created in the last two years alone. I didn't know how to work with the number quintillion at the time, so to present it, I decided to pick something that most people know the size of. The best way I can describe it is if you had 2.5 quintillion hamsters, you could cover the earth in hamsters approximately 52 times. And at the rate described above, you could do that every day. What's more, the book posits that the brains of our 30,000 year old and now deceased ancestors were not very different from our own. With respect to size and sophistication, our brains were actually nearly the same. And what separates us are recorded memories available to us because other people wrote them. A baby born today may have already been exposed to Beethoven and TikTok in the womb whereas our ancestors were born part of the food chain. This lends itself to accelerated human development or accelerated baby development. Now, at the time, and this several years ago, I was really focused on teaching and how the brain learns. Uh, the objective had the same outcome as any pursuit of knowledge, purchasing copious books on Amazon, and once I received them, I needed an approach to work through all of them, so I committed to a simple daily routine. In addition to periodicals, I read a minimum of 20 pages a day from a book, and to be clear, I don't always do this, but when I want to get up to speed on something quickly, I try and develop a new routine to do it. And to make it easy, if I miss a day, there was no compounding effect. So 20 pages a day works out to 7,300 pages per year. If you assume each book is approximately 250 pages, that's 30 books a year. 
And here's what I'll leave you with. If you want to learn something quickly, it really helps to just immerse yourself in it. I love finance and business strategy, so I read about it every day. Should you follow suit, imagine what you'll know a year from now. Even if you think only 10 pages a day is possible, why not try it? Worst case scenario, it'll just be a little nerdier. All right, guys, it's all for now. I hope it's helpful.